Hello, my name is Patricia Jessup Woodland, and I'd like to welcome you all to the workshop on assemblage. Let me tell you a little bit about it. I'm gonna read this. Our workshops here at Remainders, Creative Reuse, Spotlight an Individual, Yet Underrepresented Contribution of Women and BIPOC Artists from the Last Two Centuries. We highlight the artist's work with examples, talk about their lives, and give a hands-on studio class directly inspired by their work, showing how female and BIPOC artists have strong voices that continue to be integral to the institution of art. Now, let me go back a little bit. I introduced myself, but I didn't tell you much about myself. I'm a retired professor from the art department at Cal State LA. Um, uh, my specialty was art education and art history at times. Uh, I am also the grandmother of four and the great grandmother of one darling girl. And I'm a working, active artist. All right, now let's go back to what we were talking about before. Let me tell you a little bit about Renee Stout. She's the artist that we're going to use as a point of departure and inspiration for the art that we're going to be making today. Renee Stott was born in 1958. She's an Afri African-American sculptor and contemporary artist known for assemblage artworks dealing with her personal history and African-American heritage. Born in Kansas, raised in Pittsburgh, living in Washington, D.C., and strongly connected to through her art to New Orleans. She states, as a visual artist, I choose to explore these ideas and concerns through the variety of media that's available to me. Originally trained as a painter, I came to realize that my creative vision was so expansive it would be confining to me to limit myself to creating one medium. As a result, my bodies of work have included painting, drawing, print, sculpture, and photography. I see one of my pieces as a fragment of installation in an ongoing narrative that's my contribution to telling the story of who we are as a society at this point in time. Now, today, I want you to tell your story with what you choose. Let's talk about assemblage a little bit. And yes, I say assemblage. Some people say assemblage. It's okay either way. I just like the kind of tone of assemblage. Assemblage is a, um, well, it started, I guess, around the, the beginning of the 20th century with George Brock. If you look up assemblage, if you Google it, you're going to, Google will give us about 35 artists, well-known artists, ranging from George Brock, 21st century, to Betty Sarr, George Brock, excuse me, 20th century to Betty Sarr, 21st century. Um, full range, of course, there are many, 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 many others that Google don't, artists that Google, Google will not list. So please note, please note that assemblage is an honored art form, just as important as painting, drawing, sculpture, photography. Um, let, me show you, let me show you a few works with, uh, Examples of assemblage. A couple here. Oh, we didn't talk about materials. Let's talk about materials for a minute. In my house, everything is fair game. I mean everything. Broken jewelry, nails. My son is a bonsai specialist. Some of his bonsai tools because the, the scissors have this wonderful shape that I go, please, may I please have this? Everything is fair game. Don't dismiss anything. Fragments of, of, of newspaper, even you can incorporate collage, magazine images. There's everything, everything. Betty Starr, I was reading something about her biography recently, and she, Betty Starr says, I always walk with my eyes down, always, because I'm always looking for something that I can find to incorporate into my collage. Little treasures, little treasures out and about just on a walk. Speaking of little treasures, that you can find this particular piece, turn it right side up, is um, tree bark with a piece of jewelry and a collage, uh, eyeglass case. Anything can be used for assemblage, anything. 
So the, the, the texture is wonderful. And also, sometimes less is more. You don't have to fill the space. You can leave some of the negative space to work when you are creating your work. This is one piece. And this is another. Here we have broken jewelry. Again, images from magazines. This was from a broken um, mobile. Okay. I created during is this. Uh, this is a series called um, Sheltered in Place. And I created 60 of these. <laughs> Art can be very therapeutic, very therapeutic. This one, it's a postcard, then of course a plane. And this one is entitled One Day I'll Fly Away. Sometimes it's just, just a couple, two, three simple things are, are wonderful. Now, boxes that you can find at antique shops or uh, garage sales or wherever. This is a, a broken, a hair clip, uh, one half of a broken hair clip a postcard, and jewelry. More co postcards back here. Let's see if there's anything inside. What's inside? Oh, this one. Sometimes there, <laughs> there are pictures inside as well. So they're kind of utilitarian things that can be made. And this one, let's get this out. Okay. Here we have a broken pipe. These are all, if I show them this way, I don't know if you can see, they're all screws, different sizes, different lengths. These are tools. I, sometimes I'll get things from my son's toolbox and apologize, but he's supportive of my art making, so we can just replace these things. Small nails, coins, uh, parts of a belt, and s s found objects. Sometimes you just don't have to bend and shape. You just let it stay the way it is inside of a little music box. So as I was saying, Everything, everything that you see has possibilities and is fair game. So please explore. Please know that you can't make a mistake. If you're exploring, you can't make a mistake. This is not a drawing class. There's no right or wrong. And remember, you're creating for you. This is, this is all about you. If you approve of it, that's all you need. That's all you need. And all you need is just to let the magic happen. So here we go. All right, now in terms of a surface, um, many surfaces, many sizes are uh, adaptable to collage. This particular one that we're gonna use is uh, the inside of a, a box from an old piece of furniture. But before we, before we work with this, I wanna show you what I found um, at a local lumber company here in Pasadena a few days ago. Just these little garden things. But guess what? If we glue them all together, you can paint it, decorate it. What a perfect surface for an assemblage. And they were like 64 cents each, and they're solid wood. Okay, let's, let's put these aside. All right, so uh, when I create a, a assemblage, I don't work in any particular order. It's really important to allow yourself to play. Just have a wonderful time. It's like a puzzle that you keep manipulating and, and moving forward, back, up, down, overlapping, <laughs> diagonal, <laughs> horizontal, just play. And I gotta tell you something. Sometimes when I'm working, um, I, I'll have something on my lap, a small item, for instance, a small piece and it might tip or fall over, and I'll say, oh my gosh, oh no. Well, guess what? Sometimes when those kind of accidents happen, it's a wonderful accident because I get to rearrange what I've done. So just be very flexible about what you do. All right, with this one, we're gonna start with a doily. And of course, you could always, with surface like this, you could always paint it. You could always put uh, some kind of texture in it with uh, wallpaper or, or fabric. But we're just going to put it right on directly on the wood, and we don't since it's it's uh, laying flat. I was going to use a glue gun, but we don't have to do that. Normally, I use E6000. That just works really well for me. It just takes about 24 hours to fully dry. 
So um, let's look at, let's put this piece maybe down here. Uh, let's put these pieces on the side. Now, uh, let's see, maybe like that or like that. Uh, by the way, all of these items came from remainders. Everything, everything here that I'm utilizing. All right, now we've got some little kind of frame baseball images. Well, maybe that doesn't exactly fit with what I want to do. So I'm just going to flip it over. Let's see. But I don't want these little metal things there. So always try to have some little tools. Let's see if we can take this apart. Okay, yeah, there it goes. There we go. We got it. Let's take, do the other one. So don't be hesitant to alter and change. And again, something like this piece of wood could be painted. You could add texture to it. You could add jewelry to it. There we go. All right. Oh, wait. Maybe it would be interesting to have some kind of color under it. Let's experiment that way. Okay. Now. Okay. Here's another piece of wood at the top. Um, oh. So, uh, sometimes I use doll parts. If we wanted her eyes to be open, we could just glue them open, like so. Or there are other kind of faces we might want to use. Let's see. Let's experiment with this. And it gives a whole new feeling to the piece. So the name of the game is to have fun, and to experiment, and to explore. When I'm working, now see, we might want to use something like that and just have it be layered. There's a depth to that now. Let's leave that there for a little while and see if we, we're going to leave it or change it. All right. So. Let's experiment with, I don't even, this is some kind of wire, something that I found at <laughs> Remainders. It just, I was attracted to it. And that's the thing. If you find something that attracts you, you might not have a use for it right away, but lo and behold, in the future, it might be just exactly what you need. Okay. Uh, let's see. What about, let's put this little item right here. It's kind of cool. Now, hmm, jewelry? Jewelry works well. We're going to ignore that. Someone is buzzing away on the phone and we just, we'll pretend it's some kind of music. <laughs> I wish it were Ramsey Lewis. That's what I like to play when I'm working. Hmm. And sometimes Yo-Yo Ma, that's beautiful as well. All right. What about color? All right, do we put it this way? Let's see how it looks this way. Hmm, we'll put it that way. Let's see. Uh, I think we'll go for this way. Let's add a little more color here. Okay. And a little more, where's the other one? There it is, a little more color right there. Okay, squeeze it in there. All right, and maybe a couple more. There we are. Oh, all right. Now, let's see what else we would like to incorporate. Perhaps something interesting to add a little more interest in the center of that piece. Uh, now, the question is, do we, by the way, 
I usually don't glue down anything until I have things exactly the way I want them from past experience because I've had to take things apart. Once you've really made up your mind, you're sure this, this is it, this is really it, then, then you start to glue. I wouldn't suggest doing it before then. Now, the question is, do we want this piece with, oh, you know what? Let's try to elevate her a little bit. What can we use to elevate her? Okay, you take one of these, put, place it on top, then put this in ever so gently. Ah, oh. then we have, oh, an elevated piece. I like that. That's nice. Now, the question is, are always these decisions. Okay, <laughs> do we use this one? <laughs> or do we use this one? I can't decide. I think I will leave them both. There are their eyes. We want to slant our head down that way. I think I'll leave them both unglued until we all meet and have our, um, our Zoom gathering together and I get to see your work. And then you can <laughs> give me your opinion like, because I absolutely can't make up my mind right now. All right. There we go, I think that's it. Mm. Oh, it's important to think about negative space. See, we didn't fill this, we didn't fill this. We didn't fill this, we left that, we left that open. <laughs> it's okay to have that leftover or negative space, it adds to the, comp enhances, enhances the composition. So keep that in mind when you're working too. I am I'm going to, oh, let me try one more time. Oh my goodness gracious, I just love them both. I guess I'll have to make another one then. I'll leave her there for now. Oh, I could always put that down there. Oh, I could put it right there. There we go. Okay. All right. I think we're finished. I thank you for your time. And I encourage you to, to m make your assemblage. I encourage you to not think too much about it, to just do it intuitively. I encourage you to not be judgmental about what you do and just have a glorious time with it and let the magic happen because when you submerge yourself in doing this, time just, there's just no, time's not linear anymore. You're just, you're just in that, in that magical space. And keep this in mind too, when you create assemblage, you have done something that nobody else on this, yeah, maybe there are hundreds of thousands of millions of collages, but uh, excuse me, assemblages, but no one has made one like you have. So enjoy. Thank you for attending the class. And I would like to say that this class and others like it here at Remainders Creative Reuse are made possible by a generous grant from the City of Pasadena Arts and Culture. Thank you again, and I'll see you, uh, we'll, we'll be meeting on Zoom. Thank you.